Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making mallet handles, plain setting mallet handles, and we have three different heads from Reed Planes, so we're going to be making three different handles, so let's dive in and have some fun. So, uh, hammerhead from Reed Planes. Oh look, there's a, a different one, Reed Planes. And then, Reed Planes! So we're going to make three different heads. That'll give us a chance to try a couple different methods. I have this lead that goes in a lead holder and actually just using the lead reaches down there nicely and I can mark it. So I set the head on there exactly where I want it, mark it out, and you can see a nice outline of it. Then I'll set the head on the other way and figure out how far down I want the shoulder. I usually want the top to be sticking out about a quarter inch or so. That gives me something to play with. I can either cut it off flush later or um, shape it to the size I want. Next, I can come in with a carcass saw and cut down to the depth of the shoulder. I'm just eyeballing that and getting it rather close. That gives me something to chisel back to. I want to stay away from the, the depth that I need to be because I can always cut back a little farther, but it makes it much easier to chisel these out. And so I'm going to start chiseling out these pieces, being very careful of grain direction. Um, if the grain runs at a slight angle, you want to make sure that you don't let that run into the, the tenon we're creating here. We want this to be as close, as smooth as possible. We're going to get it close with the chisel, and then we're going to detail it back to exactly where it needs to be. And for that, I'm going to use a curved tooth float. Um, I really like this one. Uh, this is from Narex. Uh, these are really affordable for what you get and they, they work very, very well. Once that gets it very close, then I'm going to come in with a regular file and just smooth it out and get it detailed. And I'm going to get it to where it looks about right. Then drive the hammer down on here and this will tell us where we need to go. Now these heads are actually tapered so that the bottom side is slightly smaller. You can see where it's run down to. And from that point on, you never touch anything above where it has run down to. You just touch the areas below where it's at. And every time you put it back on, it goes down a little bit farther, and you keep going until you get it down all the way. This one got it pretty close, but I'm going to be peeling off a little bit more here, so I did a little more filing, and this one would take it all the way down. But we want to do some more work on it, so I'm going to actually pull it back off before driving it all the way down. You only want to drive it all the way down on the last time when you actually hang it. Now, for this one, we're going to be putting a wedge in the top, and it's much easier to split it. And I'm actually going to be using a, a small Japanese saw because it's got a very, very thin plate. Some people will drill a hole at the bottom to stop the split, uh, but that actually doesn't work very well on small pieces like this. Uh, we're going to move on to the other one because uh, we're going to, well, I'm going to do the big, basically the exact same thing over again because we're, we're doing three of these, so... Get used to it. <laughs> we're making three tenons, and then we'll tape them off because we're going to be um, shaping everything else down, and I don't want to hit that. Those are precisely the size they want, so I have like four or five layers of tape. So if I accidentally hit some tape, it's not going to go all the way down to the tenon. Spoke shaves will be your friend here. Chalk it up in a vise. Uh, if you have a shave horse, it works great, um, but just putting it in a vise works really, really well. Always go with the grain, so sometimes you're pushing, sometimes you're pulling, and you'll do opposite on either side of it. I'm going to get it close to the shape I want and then file it down. Up by the neck, you want it really nice and small with a little bit of bounce to it. Um, th that detail just makes it feel pretty good. Um, some people like it to be kind of stiff up there to have a slight swell up by the head. But this one is going to have an oval cross section all the way down. So it's small up by the neck and then back when your hand holds it, it's going to be a little larger. And so I'm actually going to turn it into an octagon and then knock the corners off the octagon with the spoke shave and then come in with files and floats and round it all down. Any high point or ridge my finger feels, hit that. And some of you are going to do draw filing, some of you are going to go with it and just get it really close. We'll come back and detail it here in a little bit. I like to put square on the end to kind of make a, a chamfered end. I, I really like that shape. And it becomes very, very easy to come in with a file and clean it off and get a really smooth surface. After that, it's all about detailing and just really going to town on this and making sure it's exactly what you want. For this one, I'm going to do more of an English pattern, uh, actually more of a London pattern, which is what you kind of think of with a, an old-style uh, hammer. It has that octagonal shape up by the neck, and it kind of swoops in a little bit. So at the very top, by the swell, I'm going to taper it down to the tenon. This is where a rounded body spoke shape can really come in useful. You can get into these tight radiuses and work on it. Then start slightly farther down from that swell, we're going to create another octagon, but this one is actually going to stay an octagon, but it was an elongated rectangular 
ovalish octagon as opposed to a square with corners cut off. Uh, same thing with the handle, and uh, except for the handle on this is actually going to be turned into an oval, so it feels a little bit better in the hand. Some people keep it an octagon, uh, but the standard pattern for it um, has it turned into an oval. So we'll turn it into an octagon, and then lock the corners off it and shape it down. So up by the neck, it's still an octagon swelling in and out, and then back by the handle, it rounds to an oval, if that's not simple and straightforward enough. <laughs> so just like as before, we're going to do it with a file and rasp and smooth it down. This one is actually made out of Epe, which is a really nice durable wood and uh, takes a little bit more work, but uh, really comes out nicely. We'll shape the end on this one the same way, chamfering very heavy chamfers on it that turn it into a, uh, a square or a slight rectangle on the end. Then come in and file it smooth, and you really get a nice detailed surface on there. I'm going to sand it down for two main reasons. Number one, the sanding shows the imperfection in the filing work. Any of the low spots um, look a little darker, and the high spots look a little lighter, and they let me know where I can come back in and file a little bit more. So once I've sanded completely on all of them, then I'm going to come back in and do a little bit more file work and kind of smooth them out, because the file will actually do most of the detail work. This one is also an oval pattern. It's actually made out of palm which isn't great, but it works out well. Once we have those done, we're going to start working on the face of the uh, the large London pattern. This is a, a wooden face so that it doesn't dent up the, the plane when you hit it. So we're going to cut off a small block that is squared to the same size as the head. And I'm going to plane it down to precisely the same size and then cut one end off nice and square. I could put it on the shooting board and shoot it up um, but uh, I actually kind of like uh, playing it like this. It just becomes a little bit more fun to work with a small piece. I also need to know how deep it is because I want the bottom of this to touch the bottom of the socket. So I'm going to mark in where that is, then I can square off a line around it, and I can cut in uh, the shoulder on this because it's going to create a round tenon just like the top of the handle. Um, and I can find the oval, the, the circle that fits it, and draw that out. I could also do it with a compass, uh, but having a circle pattern like this is really useful. Um, you, can, you can find the exact size it needs to be, lay it on there, and trace it out. And yes, for this I'm going to be using a pin uh, because it lets me know that the pin has to stay. I'm going to go down to it, but I don't touch the pin mark. Then, uh, just like we did with the, the tenon before, we're going to cut down to the shoulder. Get close to it, but stay away from it. You can always cut off a little bit more. We don't want to cut down into it. And I'm just going to eyeball the depth on there, turn it around, and chisel off the excess. This gets it really close to that line, and I can, I can take off quite a bit by chiseling it. Again, you're going to have to be very careful of the grain direction and make sure that it, it, it runs smoothly rather than running into the tenon. This is um, small, spalted hard maple, really, really nice wood for this, uh, as well as its matching handle is made out of the same thing. So then we can come in with the files and floats the exact same way we did before and round it down. I want to get it really close to that line, but I want it to be ever so slightly larger. I want it so this doesn't fit into the head. I want it to almost fit. It just feels like if I, if I really pound it down on there, it would drive it in, and it's really, really close, but very, very snug. You can see how it's bruising the side there. That's what I want. And at that point, we leave it alone. We don't drive it down on. Because if you drive it down on now, what's going to happen is it will dry, dry out in the future. That whole thing will shrink, and it will fall out. Yes, you can glue it in, um, but this is something that's intended to be consumable. You will be replacing this at some point in the future. And so it's easy to uh, make it so that you can, you can pull it out a little bit easier. And not having glue in there makes that job a lot easier in the future. We're going to make the octagons on the side to match the head and then file and smooth it down. If you put a small chamfer right on the edge, it allows it to fit in there um, so that you don't see a, a tight seam between them. That little chamfer just looks a little bit sharper. So now we're going to go on to finishing them. And for this, we're going to use boiled linseed oil and paste wax. What else would I use? <laughs> now, I use this for all of the tools that I hold in my hand. It just feels good in the hand, and it's so simple. Um, homemade boiled linseed oil, put it on, let the wood soak up as much as it wants. Put on a little more, let it soak up some more, and then come back and wipe it off. Uh, once it's all been wiped off, I'm going to let it sit for 15, 20 minutes, and then apply paste wax. Um, I don't even wait for it to fully cure. There's enough oxygen in there to, to let it fully cure. And then the paste wax can go on the outside, and that actually kind of shines it up and gives it the finish that feels good in the hand. So there's the, the shape of three handles. So here we come in and wipe it off. And for the paste wax, I'm actually going to use the stuff that I make and, uh, and sell here in the shop. This is a softer recipe that I really like. It's uh, boiled linseed oil 
beeswax, and then a little bit of mineral spirits to uh, cure it out. For the head, we're going to put it in the microwave for a while and uh, let it fully dry out. Um, if I had a little more time, I'd probably put it in the oven for a couple hours at something over boiling temperature. And that actually will suck the, uh, the moisture out of it. It will all evaporate out and the whole thing will shrink down. And at that point, you can drive it down onto the head and uh, it will actually ab absorb moisture in the future and swell up to fill it. And so it actually locks in there nicely and you don't have to use any glue. Um, but the trick is you want to put it on. Um, and the guy I'm making these heads for, he actually wants to do some more work on the heads, so I'm not going to hang it, and I'm not going to put the, the face on it. I'll just send them to him. However, for the small one on the palm, uh, this one he wants me to, uh, to make it. To hang the head, we need a wedge. And we have all these little split-offs that came when we made the tenon. We chiseled them off, and they're down on the ground. So we're going to pick these up. It's really easy to hold it and shave it down or put it into a dog. A lot of people are like, oh, no, you're going to run into wood. Well, it's aluminum. And so the aluminum will dent up and not the chisel. And it actually works really well. And then we can drive it in here. Now, sometimes you get lucky, and you can just put it on the wedge and drive it in. And this one was getting really tight, and I probably could have, but I could have also broken the wedge. So I'm going to come in with a chisel and just open up that mouth a little bit. And then that gives me enough I can put in the wedge and drive it down on. And uh, you want to drive it in until it gets to the bottom of the slot. The slot is not cut as long as the whole tenon. And this wedge is a lot longer because it came off of one of the larger tenons. So there's a good bit extra sticking out. Then we can cut it off to the right length and trim it down. Um, I'll use a, a chisel to shape it close and then smooth it off with the file. And that's it. That's how you hang them. They're really, really simple, really easy. And you get to have a lot of fun kind of experimenting and playing on your own. Lots of fun. So there you have it. There are lots of different designs for these, and if you look them up online, the, you will see a bunch of them. Um, Jeff from Replanes has a, um, a quick plan sheet that comes with the mallet heads um, with a couple different designs on those, so you can see other things that might be inspiring to you. It's one of those things where there is no right or wrong to it. It's kind of your own way to interpret it and how you like it and your own feel, what wood you want to use. Um, it really doesn't matter on the wood as long as it's durable enough because you generally have a thin neck. You don't want something that's going to be breaking on you. But most hardwoods will do phenomenally for that. So earlier this week I did a video showing the new heads from Reed Plains. And uh, they're really kind of cool. So you have the traditional London pattern and this most of the time has a wooden face on it. Um, great for setting planes. But then you also have the Japanese style which has a flat on both sides. And I really like a lighter weight one which I just realized I put on upside down. Uh, oops. So the heads have this thin piece here that allows you to get into the, the hook on the wedge so you can remove it that way. Um, also, with the regular also with the regular head, then you can be setting your pieces. These are made of brass, so they're strong, so they're smooth. These are all made of brass, so they are softer than the steel you're tapping on, so you're not going to be mushrooming the steel, you'll be denting up the brass, which is what they're intended to do. It's kind of a fun design. I really like how they come out. So three different designs, three different weights. Um, yeah, uh, kind of fun. Now, I made three different handles for three different heads because we recently auctioned these off for charity. If any of you have ever looked at buying hand saws, uh, one you are going to come across a lot is Florup, uh, Florup Tools. He makes amazing saws, but he recently went in for a doctor's visit and come to find out he had a brain tumor, um, had to have an emergency surgery, and so thus uh, us in the maker's world are um, putting together a charity for him. And uh, Jeff and I sold off these heads, and I'm making the handles for them, and all that charity is going towards um, Eric Florup's um, surgery and his medical needs. And if you'd like to donate to that, there are links to that down in the description below. Uh, if you ever looked at any of the saws in the, the hand tool world, he is one of the predominant makers and has been doing amazing things for the woodworking community. And so our thoughts and prayers to you, Eric, and I hope you pull through it. And if you'd like to find out more, links down below. I do want to say thank you to everyone who comments down below. Anytime you hit like, comment, share, subscribe, those things help out the channel and they keep us going. So thank you for that. That is what kind of helps the algorithm around here. And if you know anything about YouTube, it's the algorithm that counts. So like, comment, share, subscribe. Thank you as well as there's a bunch of people scrolling over here. There are names on this side. They are the patrons on Patreon. Uh, they are the ones who are sponsoring this channel. So sponsors like you are the ones who keep us going. We are completely funded by you, the viewer. Thank you for that. Uh, I like to be able to do that because I get to say what I want to say, not what the sponsors want me to say. Unless you really want me to say something, then uh, join Patreon and let me know. <laughs> but I think that will do it for now. So until next time, have a wonderful day. And we... Oh. I put it on upside down. Well, you're going to have to fix that.
Okay, so can I drive it out and re 